Topic. Giant bears in Alaska today. Fact or fiction? Is it possible that a species or subspecies of giant bear survives today in Alaska? In 2014, researchers from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and the Alaska Parks Department discovered a short-faced bear skull which was carbon dated to be around 1,300 years old. This remarkably well-preserved skull has provided significant insight into the prehistoric fauna of the region. The skull was found in a remote area of the Seward Peninsula, which is located in the northwestern part of the state. This skull has changed the scientific understanding of prehistoric animals in Alaska, as the short-faced bear was previously thought to have become extinct around 12,000 years ago during the last ice age. This new discovery indicates that short-faced bears survived in Alaska long after the ice age and that there must have been at least a small population that lived in the region. Is it possible that this species, a hybridization of this species, or even a giant subspecies of the brown bear exists today in Alaska? With large specimens standing 14 feet tall and weighing well over a ton, the short-faced bear is one of the largest terrestrial carnivores to ever exist, and the discovery of this fossil has raised questions about how the species may have adapted to the changing environment of Alaska. Some scientists believe that the short-faced bear may have evolved to become larger than modern-day bears to better survive in the harsh Arctic climate of the time. While there is no current controversy surrounding this find, there is ongoing debate and discussion among scientists about the implications of this discovery. The find of this fossil highlights the importance of continued research and exploration of the vast and remote areas of Alaska, as there may be many more important discoveries waiting to be made. The 2014 discovery of the 1,300-year-old short-faced bear skull in Alaska has prompted ongoing debates and discussions among scientists about its implications. One area of debate centers on the relationship between this extinct species and modern brown bears. Some researchers believe that the short-faced bear was a direct ancestor of brown bears, while others argue that it represents a separate lineage that was distinct from brown bears. Another area of discussion focuses on the ecological role of the short-faced bear in Alaska's prehistoric ecosystem. Some scientists believe that this species played a significant role as a top predator, while others suggest that it may have been more of a scavenger and opportunist. Additionally, the discovery of the short-faced bear skull has raised questions about the history of Alaska's wildlife and its potential vulnerability to climate change and human activity. Some researchers believe that the extinction of the short-faced bear and other large carnivores in Alaska's past may have contributed to changes in the region's ecosystems, and that similar changes could occur in the future if current wildlife populations continue to decline. Overall, the discovery of the short-faced bear skull has prompted significant scientific interest and research, and ongoing debates and discussions about its implications are likely to continue in the future. Today we have two leading experts on Alaska's bear populations and history to debate whether Alaska has giant bears living today. Let me introduce. Dr. Sarah Johnson is a paleontologist with over 15 years of experience in the field. She specializes in the study of prehistoric bear species and has conducted research all over the world. Sarah has a PhD in paleontology from the University of California, Berkeley, and has published numerous articles in academic journals. Dr. Michael Brown is a wildlife biologist with a focus on Alaskan bear populations. He has spent over a decade studying brown and grizzly bears in the wild and has worked with numerous conservation organizations. Michael has a PhD in wildlife biology from the University of Alaska, Fairbanks, and has authored several books on bear behavior and conservation. And I am your humble moderator, Alexandra Gupta. My keen interest in the natural world has once again blessed me with the opportunity to play a small role in this scientific debate. Let's get started. In a nutshell, what is your basic position on giant bears in Alaska? Dr. Brown, you first. Describe your position and the evidence for it. My basic position? Great question. Giant bears in Alaska are most likely just misidentified grizzly bears, which can reach large sizes in certain areas. 
There is no scientific evidence to suggest the existence of a distinct giant bear species in Alaska. Eyewitness accounts and photographs of giant bears can often be misleading due to optical illusions and perspective. My best evidence? I will present data and research on grizzly bear populations and their size variations in different regions of Alaska. I will show examples of misidentification of large grizzly bears as giant bears in eyewitness accounts and photographs. Dr. Johnson, you next. Describe your position and the evidence for it. Super. Basically, while there are documented very large bears in Alaska, such as Kodiaks and certain record polar bears, evidence points to the possibility of a population, currently not scientifically documented, which may be considered giant bears. The recent discovery of a 1,300-year-old skull of a giant short-faced bear in Alaska suggests the existence of a distinct prehistoric bear species that was once native to the region. There are vast uninhabited areas of Alaska that could potentially serve as a refuge for a small population of surviving giant bears. There have been reported sightings and tracks of large, bear-like animals in various Alaskan locations that could potentially be a hybridized population of giant, short-faced bears and grizzly bears. My best evidence? I will present information and analysis of the 1,300-year-old fossil, highlighting the unique characteristics that differentiate it from other bear species. I will also present evidence of reported sightings and tracks of large, bear-like animals in different parts of Alaska and explain how they could potentially be hybridized giant bears. Great! Now, let's get into the meat of the debate. As we go, I will ask both presenters follow-up questions, encourage you to respond to each other's arguments, and ensure a fair and balanced debate. Now let me remind our audience and those of you listening at home, Please keep an open mind and consider all of the evidence presented before coming to a conclusion. With that said, Dr. Brown, will you please present your initial arguments? Dr. Johnson, feel free to respond once Dr. Brown has finished. Sure. While the discovery of a 1,300-year-old fossil is interesting, it does not necessarily prove the existence of a distinct giant bear species in Alaska. It could be a relic of a species that went extinct long ago. Additionally, the fossil may not be representative of the entire population of bears in Alaska at that time. I agree that the skull is just one piece of evidence, but it cannot be dismissed as irrelevant. The unique features of the fossil suggest that it represents a distinct species that may have once lived in Alaska. It is possible that a small population of these bears survived in uninhabited areas and evolved into the giant bears that people have reported seeing. It's important to remember that eyewitness accounts and photographs of giant bears can often be misleading. The perception of size can be distorted by distance, angle, and lighting. What people think are giant bears could simply be regular-sized grizzlies that appear larger than they actually are. That may be true, but it doesn't explain the reported sightings of bear-like animals with unique characteristics such as longer legs and a distinct body shape. These features are not typical of a regular-sized grizzly bear and could suggest the presence of a different species. It's also possible that these sightings are hybridized bears. Grizzly bears and polar bears have been known to interbreed in Alaska, and their offspring, known as grizzly or golar bears, can have unique physical traits. While hybridization is possible, it does not explain all the reported sightings. The unique features of these animals are not consistent with those of pizzly or grolar bears. Furthermore, a small population of surviving giant bears could potentially interbreed with grizzly bears and create hybrid offspring. Thank you both for presenting your arguments and evidence. It's clear that this is a complex issue with different perspectives. Audience members, please keep an open mind and consider all the evidence presented before making a conclusion. Doctors, what of this notion of a fossil from only 1,300 years ago pointing to the possibility of a giant bear population existing today? I mean, in 2013 we thought the short-faced bears all died out 12,000 years ago. Now we discover at least some small population survived 10,000 years longer than we previously knew about. That puts them far closer to modern times. 
Yet 1,300 years is still a very long time, is it not? Dr. Brown, you go first. The discovery of a single fossil doesn't necessarily mean that the species survived until modern times. It could have gone extinct a long time ago due to various reasons such as climate change, habitat loss, or competition with other species. While that may be true, the existence of large bear-like animals in various parts of Alaska cannot be ignored. The tracks and sightings reported by locals and hunters are too numerous to be dismissed as mere misidentification or optical illusions. But eyewitness accounts and tracks can often be unreliable and misleading. It's important to have concrete scientific evidence to support claims of the existence of a distinct giant bear species in Alaska. Of course, but until we conduct a thorough scientific investigation, we can't rule out the possibility of the existence of such a species. The discovery of the fossil and the reported sightings are worth exploring further. Thank you, both. This has been a fascinating debate. While we may not have reached a definitive conclusion, it's clear that there is still much to learn about the possibility of giant bears in Alaska. Let's continue to encourage research and exploration in this field to further our understanding of this fascinating topic. And with that, our time is up for tonight's debate.